hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. And we welcome to the studio. First time in a long time. Laura Murata. <laughs> hey. Oh my god, wait, I realized I should put my headphones on. You don't need to. We you really can do whatever you want. I mean, we do have I a debut. I want to hear how nice you are. I do. I sound amazing through the headphones. We do have a debut album to discuss. Uh, you can listen to the whole thing. I may be an actress, but I can't fake how I feel. It's all waiting for you on Amazon Music. Just click the link in the description below. I, we've talked on this show before. It's uh, been years. Uh, uh, about this... Uh, this this thing of like um pretending to be somebody else mm-hmm. as an actress, but then being a hundred percent yourself in music and being a hundred percent vulnerable and honest and really tapping into something that is totally it is different making music. Hundred percent, right? yeah. The, the, in so many different ways. Can you just like um I, can you just describe what it's like to really create something from nothing that is a hundred percent you compared to bringing to life somebody else's vision or your own vision but built around a character that is not you yeah yeah I think it's so funny because that was always something that I always was so drawn to with music I mean since I was a little girl like I love the idea that it's just me and you have to understand for me you know I've been acting since I'm five so that's a lot of you know having fun and playing pretend which I also love I love having an imagination I you know I've said before and I really believe acting helps teach you empathy Mm -hmm. because you're walking you know into another person another character's shoes but music is scary and personal and beautiful because it's all you and I think it's funny Acting has always been such a part of my life on a professional level, and music has always been such a part of my life on a personal level. And being able to do music on a professional level as well, it's like this overwhelming and scary uh, thing to do because you're bringing that personal into the forefront. So with this album, it was funny because it was a lot of processing feelings that I think I had kind of buried for a very long time. Yeah, because you're focused on being other people. Yeah, and I think also, like, for acting, it's always you are not just playing a part, but you are uh, morphing yourself to fit the vision of someone, you know, in someone else's head. You're, uh, you think of yourself as kind of like, you have to almost separate yourself from your from the physical from who you are a part of you is like clay essentially 100 percent, and also you have to kind of like let go the idea of uh of not being able to handle rejection right because i get told on a regular basis on acting level like no you're not good enough no 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 do you remember the last time it was hard to hear no or is it still hard to hear you're not good enough Well, I think it's different with music, right? So music, again, is so personal. So I think it's still hard to hear that a little bit. For acting, I don't know. There's such a, uh, maybe a numbness there, which maybe is healthy. How many (laughs) hundreds of uh, auditions in? Oh, I I mean, literally, we're probably, for how long I've been doing it, like in the thousands of like, Uh. no, you're not the one. You're not good enough. You're not who we want. I mean, I was replaced on two shows within six months of each other when I was like 11. That's the Because worst. I was too old. Really? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, like probably no fault of your own. It just took that long for the show to even get picked up. Probably from no, the- I, no, actually even more embarrassing. The show, like I was on the show. Like people saw me on the show like for multiple episodes. And then the next episode, it was a younger girl. What? <laughs> yes. And then the second time it happened six months later... Um, it, I was on it and it was a, I exactly, actually I was hoping for that because I did the pilot <laughs> and usually like they replace and you're like, okay, cause it's less embarrassing when you're like, people didn't know yeah. that you were in it. Well, Still with that show, I was in the pilot episode and then the next week there was a blonde girl who was playing my part. Yeah. It was like bizarre. But that still hurts. Like, oh, of course I've done two pilots and then they ended up going forward with the show in one case and like went with other people instead of me. And then, yeah, another case, they just didn't go with it. But it's still solid. Like, that is... Oh, totally. But uh, it, there's another level of embarrassment when people yeah. saw that you were in it. <laughs> I had people in school coming up to me. Or even I would have, like... Oofta. I would have, you know... Which I like to think positively. And I think when it's a weird business, especially when you're a young girl and you're, like, an early teen. But I had, like, some girls in audition um, rooms be like... 
I can't believe you're not on that show anymore. Um, and, and I really do think in my heart of hearts that they didn't mean to be like rub in my face, but it was weird. It was like right before I went in for like another audition. What show was it? Um, a show called Back to You on Fox and then a show called Gary Unmarried on CBS. Wow. Yeah. Wait, that's <laughs> wild. <laughs> it was. Is there an audition that you, you've uh, like you've gotten pretty far in the process, like a role uh, that you've actually genuinely wanted that you were bummed that it didn't end up going your way? I mean, I, I still think it's funny with acting. I can still get disappointed and really want something and still be able to separate when I'm told no. So, yeah, there's definitely been a few. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the last one that, like, came out because then all of them also don't necessarily, like, come to fruition or come out. Um, That's wild. Yeah, it's 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 funny. I, I still definitely... I've, I'm happy that I'm not jaded enough in the process where I kind of like, I'm, I don't care. I don't, you know, I don't want to do this. I really genuinely only go out for things or tape for things that I really like love and am excited about the part or I haven't done that part before. I haven't done that kind of project before. It must be weird to go from being on a show like Austin and Allie and you have so much security and to a certain degree, you're not allowed to audition. Like you go from auditioning no. for, for forever to not auditioning at all Well, and then being thrown back into it. Yeah, not only that, um, you know, there were, I wasn't allowed not just to audition. I mean, you were allowed to audition, but then you had to clear any part that you got. And there were two different parts that I got that just didn't get cleared. And one of them was an like a guest star on an ABC show, which I thought for sure was going to get cleared because it was in the family. Um, but it was like the character was a little too dark and they're like, you can't play that dark character. And I was like... No, <laughs> even though other other actors had done that in the past. So that was always a little confusing if like, um, you know, you you do kind of look for, OK, you have a the same rule for everybody. But that wasn't always the case. So it was, oh, it was strange. Course. Yeah. I mean, a decision made by a couple mid-level executives who just wanted to be safe and sorry. Yeah, I guess. Just, I guess I don't know what they were worried about, like parents being like, "Oh, she was this character on this ABC show, so she we can't see her in any other but, way." By the way, like you can rationalize, or they can attempt to rationalize their decision, or it could have just been based on personal preference. That's the totally. thing with a lot of those decisions. Like you really don't know, and not everybody's ever pushed to like back up decisions. Accountability doesn't always show its face all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Well, it's also su it is subjective, isn't it? Yeah. And it, you, it's hard to quantify exactly like um, decisions of what effects they led to. A little bit, you know, if their decision was based on we don't want an audience to see you a certain way, how do you even quantify that? Like, yeah. so it, yeah, it's hard. You just have to kind of accept it and keep going. That's it. And what? Well, but that sucks at the same time because also in that moment you want to be challenged. You want to take on something new. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean that one I was annoyed about. But the second one that I wasn't allowed to do, I was like devastated because I was going to be working with like two of my like actual female comedic heroes. And that one I remember like just sobbing. I was like so upset. Wait, that's hard, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and it was like the last during the last season or like right before the last season started. So it was also kind of like, oh, I really, really want this because I feel like this is that next step for me. And, you know, it wasn't able to happen. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, it, You know, it's so funny because I haven't even thought about that in such a long time that I'm like, now I look back and I'm kind of like, oh, what happens, happens. It is really fascinating because then after that you have to go and like, all you, I mean, if you choose to, then you're just, you have to audition for a bunch of shit. Yeah, which I don't mind. I, I actually don't mind. I think after the show, I obviously got a little bit pickier and I definitely yeah. wanted to not do a TV show for a hot minute because I just came off doing a TV show. So I was definitely way more interested in doing film. Um, but I don't mind. I think I understand that some people after you have this like success and you have such a platform given to you, I think you also get like advice from like every person and their mother about what you should do and what like what your strategy should be and blah, blah, blah. Um, and for uh, that first year after the show, I was fully focused on music. I had signed a record label, so I wasn't even like thinking about acting. Um, but I feel like the one of the worst advice you can get is like don't audition anymore. 
Like, I think that's not, in my opinion, the best choice. I think being pickier is great and definitely not necessarily taping for every single thing. Um, But I think the advice of, like, only allow or get offers isn't the best strategy, in my opinion. But a lot of people take that rule. Yeah. And see where it takes them. Yeah, for sure. But Austin and Allie gives you your first original song, right? Boombox? So it wasn't with Austin Alley. People always Wait, think that. why is that in the, like, that is literally well, in my breakdown She here. said people often think that. So. Yeah, 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 so what's going on it's, here? no, it was, that was with my, with Big Machine. That was the first, uh, yeah, that was the well, song with. You were with Big Machine. I was with Big Machine. Oh, wait, okay, no, no, no. So 2016, Boombox comes out, but you did in 2013 record your first ever song for the soundtrack. Yes. Turn it up. For the the soundtrack was called Turn It Up, yeah. What song do you do for that album? Oh uh, well, it, it was the Austin. It was an Austin Alley song. So it was like I had written an original song, which was really cool. It was my first like co-write session ever too. A song so. called I'm Finally Me. Um, and then um, you know, my character had kind of gone over her stage fright and was like starting to sing, and so I had some original songs on the on the soundtrack. Did you have original songs ready to go when they asked for it, or did you have to like? So the one that they. Um, used on the show that I wrote, I wrote specifically for the show. So it it was like the, the brief was a song for my character who is officially gone over her stage fright and her first like song from that. Um, and that song we, it was called I'm Finally Me. Um, but then the other songs were just, they weren't my, like I didn't write them. They were just for the show. I mean, when you get that task, is that I'm, I'm assuming that's something you wanted, right? You wanted oh, to be yes. challenged like that. Yes, a hundred percent. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And to be honest, I think, um, I think. I mean, I was very vocal about wanting to do music for the show, and especially wanting to do original music because I love love songwriting. I'm I'm way more interested in writing and singing a song that I wrote than just like singing oh. a song that I didn't write. Um, so yeah, I was I was very much like uh not just up for the challenge but like wanting it and very like vocally wanting it being like i should write a song for the show and blah 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 and then they let me were you writing from your perspective or from the character's perspective from the character's perspective oh yeah yeah, yeah. interesting which is really fun to do to be honest yeah is there anything on this debut album that is written from somebody else's perspective no all yours all me yeah it's deeply personal it's so personal, yeah. And yeah. it flows like a show. It's giving actress. It's giving, it's giving actress. It's giving movie. It's giving a story. Yes, I definitely very much wanted to feel a bit cinematic. It hits. Uh, do you have a favorite? I mean, the, dude, the first record I listened to is fucking amazing, but it also, that first song has the, the lyric. That, yeah, it has the title. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. It's so good. But, and that's like really just a, I mean, it's just a beautiful way to come at it. Like, yeah, you fake emotions all day, every day. But the thought of, like, being with somebody that, like, I don't know, that brings out the most honest feelings and emotions from you, it hits on numerous levels. Ah, uh, it's scary. Oh, my God, I was, like, petrified to put this out. And really? especially the interludes, I feel like, are the most personal. Well, have I reached my peak? <sighs> that must be a scary one, because you're like, I'm still so young, but, like, is my career done? <laughs> totally. And it was, like, I remember... So the interludes, this album was written for like over years and years, right? One song's from 2015, a couple songs from 2017, but all the interludes are from like this year. Uh, Yeah, 2023. I'm also like, are we still in 2023? Okay, we are. I think, think, right? Uh, But so yeah, I remember that came, this was just a hard year, which it wasn't the year I expected to write and work and release my debut album in, but maybe it was the year that needed to happen for me to do it because- The interludes, I think, would not have happened without it being as tough of a year as it was. And part of the toughness was me just really struggling career wise of like just feeling feeling like a a loss of purpose, feeling a loss of like um, creativity, feeling a loss of like self and identity into that. And so I think that song really came from from those feelings and again like processing those feelings and that that's like I feel such a big fear of so many people and especially people who have had success uh, at a younger age and feeling like oh my god I have so much more to give but maybe I don't maybe I've Mm. given the best of myself already and that's so scary because I feel so young Mm -hmm. it's like it's a really 
scary place to be. And I was like, well, I'm just going to write and write a song from it. And that's what I did. And what do you learn from writing that record? Where do you, where do you end up after it? I think it was so healing to write it and put it out. But I certainly wouldn't say that I'm like on the other side of it yet. Mm -hmm. But I definitely felt, I felt a sense of relief when I finished writing the interludes. So I, I wrote the interludes, um, I finished them in like June of this year, like right before the album was like turned in. And I remember that that was honestly as uh, sad and personal as those songs are and vulnerable. That was my favorite part of the process because I got to get so weird with like creating them. And, you know, we like recorded some vocals in the bathroom. Like it was just like weird what we were doing and it was fun and it was healing. But I certainly wouldn't say that I'm like, okay, now I've, I've processed everything and resolved every issue I had in my head. And I wouldn't say that, but... I feel like I'm one step closer. So you build this album off of songs that you've written over a bunch of different years, and then you try to connect them all by building the interludes afterwards? I think in my process of picking the songs, there were a lot of songs I still didn't include. So I basically, I write for my last EP, the Us EP, that was heavily about my breakup. And I can't stop writing. I'm like, oh my God, I can't stop. And I knew, knew, knew I wanted to like finish this like trilogy of EPs. I had the me EP, I had the UEP and I wanted to finish with the SEP. Um, so I didn't want to like make it an album, but I was like, oh my God, I can't stop writing. I feel like I'm finally ready for an album. So I, you know, I have that in the back of my head. I release this EP, I go on tour. Um, and all the while I'm like, okay, I have songs. I'm ready for an album. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what it is, but I know for the first time ever, I feel like, okay, I'm ready and I'm pursuing this and I'm doing it, you know, in 2023. And then I come up with that lyric. I can't, you know, I may be an actress, but I can't fake how I feel. And that I remember being in the parking garage and getting that lyric in my head and being like, it just changed everything for me because I was like, wait, this is not just a breakup album. This is an album about me, which sounds silly and obvious and like, duh. But it never occurred to me that this album should just be about me and my identity and dealing with loneliness and dealing with, I think, this career that I've had that has been a part of my life for, you know, the majority of my life and all the things in my life that have been shaped because of this career. Um, and so all of a sudden, every song that I wanted to include in this album, I wanted to include because it helped tell that story. So the songs that were from a while ago, they were included because they helped tell that story. There are plenty of songs that I love that I almost included, but it just didn't really tell that story. And then, yeah, while I was making the interstitials, continuing to shape the story around those interstitials uh, was definitely the goal and what I try to do at least. What song is from 2015? Brand New Heart. Why was that vital to the story you're trying to tell? Uh, two things. So one, I didn't even, wasn't even thinking about that song, to be honest with you. Um, and then it got the opportunity to be in a movie I was going to be in. And I was like, you know, I sent like a Dropbox of a bunch of music to the music supervisor. And I was like, oh, this is wait, I remember the song and I remember like listening to it and being like, oh, I'm identifying and resonating with it way more now than I was back then about like feeling like, okay, I've been hurt. I've fallen down numerous times, but I'm not going to treat myself as this fragile, delicate person. I'm going to keep getting up and scars and all and just like love hard, do things hard and do what I can. And so I also felt like it's one of the most upbeat songs on the album. And I felt like the album mm. sonically needed that a little bit because it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really, <laughs> really like slow or sad kind is. of down songs. There are for <laughs> yeah. sure. And so it kind of felt right to have that song in it. But to be honest, a big reason at first was because it was, I was going to get a sync with it. That's sick. I mean, the sync is sick. Yeah, but it, the idea that I was happy that I resonated with it way more now as well. Is it what, what, what type of new meaning does it take? I think when I wrote it, I, I 
almost like smile sadly and like uh, laugh at myself a little bit when I wrote it because I feel like whatever feelings I was putting in at that time, I have experienced like <laughs> tenfold since then. So I think, I think in a lot of ways it was just, there was a nostalgia with it. Um, and also this level of just being like, wow, I really have, I'm like, Miles and miles from where I was when I wrote it in 2015. Um, and now I feel like I've earned the song a little bit more. I feel like I didn't really earn it when I wrote it in 2015, what the lyrics were and what it meant, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's interesting. What are you thinking, Dan? Well, if that was the oldest song. Which was the newest song? Um, The Interstitials. The, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So probably, yeah. I mean, I wrote, I had ideas about them over the last like two years, but they were all like finished, finished uh, in June of this year. Well, speaking of those, let me ask you a question. Do you think you have a punchable face? I kind of think I do. I do a little <laughs> bit. I feel like I can. Um, whether that's like me being influenced by reading it online or me actually thinking it, well, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I don't think you have a punchable face. I, I like your a face. a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, I love a your good face. face. Thank you. Is it hard to write a lyric like that? You're like, damn, that's what I'm reading about me is like people <laughs> want to punch me in the face. So it's like, that must be hard to read every day. Yeah, I mean. Well, not every day. but I, like, I was going to say, listen, it's not like. It's one of those comments that you read and it sticks with you. It does. And I feel like I saw that like a while ago. So it wasn't like even I had just read and I was like, oh, I'm going to write this line. I'd seen it a while ago and I'd seen it a few times. Mm -hmm. Like it was from a few <laughs> different people. And I was like, God, maybe I think they might be right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think that whole song is also... There is like, I don't know if you feel this way at all, but there is like a level of addiction, not just with the internet, not just with our phones, but with like not seeking criticism, but oh, yeah. almost in a weird way, like I must find mm -hmm. every single comment that says something bad about me so I can, I don't know, hurt myself. I don't know what it is. It's weird, but there's like this weird addiction to the hate. And there, I think for me, I have done, and I don't do it, anymore I don't do it as much anymore <laughs> but I used to like totally like put my name in in like Twitter just like oh yeah and see see what came up and I always was like regr I always regretted it I was like why am I doing this but isn't that one of the reasons why you strategically had a flip phone yes totally do you still no I have an iPhone now oh what change? I know okay I went to New Zealand to film a movie and they gave me an iPhone like and by like it was an iPhone three. It was like an iPhone four. Like it was oh. it was bad. It wasn't a good one. And I was a little bit like, damn, this does make life a little easier. But, <laughs> but I was like, no, I'm still, you know, still sticking with it. I'm still going with the flip phone. And then I went through my breakup and I think I was like, I need to do something crazy. And instead of like getting a tattoo or getting a motorcycle, I got an iPhone. That's, was that is crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Very edgy. But that changes everything now. It like, does. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I'm th obviously there's an ease to life with it, but there's a. There's a lack of efficiency in life to it. There's oh, yeah. like it's distracting. Distracting and like and it's so funny, everyone always had an issue in my life of like, it's so hard to reach you because of my flip phone. Yeah. And I still feel like it's hard to reach me, to be honest, because well, I'm like overwhelmed consistently. That's it. But you did used to walk around with like this <laughs> iPad. I know I still do oh, it too. You, you I don't were, have it with me today. I, she was crazy. She'd walk around with this iPad like a grandma. So she'd have her flip phone in one hand and this giant fucking iPad in the other. And that's how you're doing your day. <laughs> it was like this. I'm like, uh, it was just so, it, it definitely also wasn't efficient. I don't no, know what the no, secret is. It, I don't. it gave command center, but from like the 80s. It was really weird. I loved it. It was, it was definitely strange. I don't <laughs> regret it. And I still, even to this day, will bring my iPad with me. It's honestly, it's in my car right now. Probably like, the same <laughs> iPad that yes. I saw you with last. A hundred percent. And then even, here's, can I go one step further? Yeah. Okay. I had the flip phone. Got it. That was obviously I made calls with and would text uh, occasionally when my storage wasn't filled. <laughs> I had the iPad, which had self-service, so I could do a lot of things. Social media, emails, all the stuff. I was given an iPhone. Whoa. And I just didn't use it except to take photos. Ah. So I, it was like my camera. So I had no cell service on that. 
I had only cell service on my flip phone. I had Wi-Fi and cell service on the iPad. And I would have these three devices with me on a regular basis. It's crazy. You can consolidate all of it <laughs> to the know. iPhone. It's insane. <laughs> so that was when in New Zealand, when I was like forced to do that, I was like, whoa. What year is that? This is crazy. That was 2021. <laughs> so two years ago. <laughs> I know. This is, this is, and I only got the iPhone in 2021 of like, Ju- like August, July, 2021. So it's still kind of new. Oh, very new. Yes. I'm yes. just picturing like the whole world back then when they realized that this little touch screen sits in their pocket. And is a computer. But it makes me sad that people meet me now and haven't met the person who had a flip phone. Oh. Like, it actually does kind of make me a little sad. I'm is like, it- wait, you don't really know this history of mine. Yeah, but what's the difference? How, how have you changed? Um, I feel like I'm more addicted to my phone. Got you know it. what I mean? Yeah. And Oof. I felt like I had a bit of an identity crisis because I was like, I was always the... I had a flip phone. You're the flip phone girl. I was a flip phone girl. And then I wasn't anymore. And I was like, oh my God, who am I? <laughs> I'm just a regular iPhone girl. What is, have I reached my peak? And that was the start of that song. That was yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can listen to this debut album that we're discussing. It's all waiting for you. Every song that Laura Moran has ever put out is waiting on Amazon Music. There's a link in the description below. Woohoo. What are you thinking? I mean, 23 songs is a lot. It's a lot. But there is interludes included in that. Yes. So. So 17 regular songs, which yeah. is still a lot. And then uh, six interludes. That's good. It's a, it's an experience. But it's also yeah. taken your whole life to get to a debut album, which could have come out maybe. You could have released a debut album right out of Austin and Alley like six, yeah. seven well, years ago. Yeah, well, that was the plan. I mean, the plan was I was signed to a label. I was working on my debut album. I made a debut album. I like – it was – because of my deal, I was actually the one who financially made that debut album. Really? Yes. And then I wasn't able to release it, which was a bummer what? on so many ways. Yes. Um, so that, like, I made a debut album. Looking back, I'm thankful that that wasn't my debut album because it really was even back then though I was like gonna have skits on it. Like I always wanted like a concept album. Always. Like that was always what I wanted to do. But it you know, I was really did not know who I was in terms of wanting to like make everyone in my label happy. Um, like a lot of the album, not most of it, but I, I almost want to say half and half, or maybe like a little less than half were songs I didn't write because I feel like there is a little bit, at least my experience, and at least back then, there's a little bit of a game to be played in terms of like if someone at your label or, you know, in that sphere is kind of like, oh, this is a hit, yeah. you you kind of play the game a little bit being like, okay, yeah, it's a hit. And then you record it and then, you know, you decide if it's going to be a single or not. And so I think that there was a lot of songs with that vibe a little bit. Um, songs that I still loved and I loved performing and I, I believed in. But I didn't ever feel 100% connected to them by any means. Um, so I'm glad that that wasn't my debut album. But I will say I was uh, uh, plenty of reason not excited about it. Oh. But to your point, yeah, this has been a long time coming. So I don't know. With this, I was kind of like, here's my debut album and my sophomore album all rolled into one. And this is <laughs> this is a long time coming. Fans have been waiting a long time to get this album. And I knew... Listen, it's overwhelming. It's it's a big number, and I was fully aware of that. It's a long title. I mean, all of the things, <laughs> all of the things that I know part of me and my independent self kind of, like, relish in. If I was at a major, I would think it would be mm-hmm. really hard as a pop girl, not like a alternative music girl or anything, but, like, as a pop girl to deliver this album. And I kind of loved that. I was kind of like, oh, this is wholeheartedly, 100% unequivocally me. And I get to do it because I'm independent, which was kind of cool. Scary, yet special. Yes, and, yes. And, all the asses. An album made for you, first and foremost, yeah? Yeah, 100%. I, I, I think I really wanted to share it with people, but first and foremost, it was just a part of me that I needed to make for myself. Like, I mean, you look at what could be next, but are you even looking there or are you just really just enjoying this moment? Yeah, I'm not even, I really am not. I'm kind of like looking at what's next. I'm just, it has been such a long, long time coming. So many years in the making of putting this out and so much hard work and stress and tears and sweat and metaphorical blood, not literal blood, because that would be (laughs) a little scary. Um, 
that, yeah, I think I'm just definitely needing a second to just, okay, reflect, figure things out, and, and yeah, revel in the moment, I think. It really is a beautiful body of work. You should be so freaking proud. Thank you. It is a, it, but by the way, like, yeah, it's a bunch of songs, but it, the running time, I think, is only like an hour and five mm-hmm. or yeah, something. Yeah, it's only an hour and five, so it's not... It's not like a crazy, crazy long time to listen, but it is still, I I acknowledge an hour and five minutes is still an hour and five minutes. Uh, from act two, the internet scene two, my face is pretty punchable. You said it there. We talked about it. Why, like, <laughs> but, but, it sticks out just that It's just it's yeah. crazy that it's there. Why do you need to break down things in by act and scenes? Why was that vital? Well, I loved, first of all, I knew I was going to have interludes, right? Um, and I knew I wanted this to be a concept album. And so there's just something that I think the, uh, the actress in me really (laughs) loved the idea of like making it feel like a play and breaking it down that way. Um, and especially because, you know, obviously movie scripts and TV scripts also are broken down in acts. It's just a little bit less acts than necessarily a play would be. Um, I felt like it felt right to bring that part of me into the album from like a like tangible in some ways lyrical you can actually read and get reminded of what I'm talking about here so it's a it's also those songs to have like the longest title ever like act five colon have I reached my peak question mark there's a lot going on (laughs) But, but again I wanted it there you know obviously those acts are like how do you curate the songs to fit the acts essentially Well, that was a big thing. I was, you know, again, I was working on this track list order, working on the track list, working on the interludes, all kind of simultaneously at like different points. And there were many times when I was moving songs around and, you know, kind of like, wait, this shouldn't be in this act. This needs to be somewhere else. I think the big part for me was the songs when I first wrote them definitely had uh, an intention and in terms of like who I was writing them about, what I was writing it about. But I love that given the context and around the right act and within the right act, you could almost interpret them to mean something else, which for me was really fun. And I loved the fact that there was a, some, some of these songs have like double, triple meaning. Are they about an ex-partner? Are they about my career? Are they about the internet? Are they about this or that? So I think for me, I wanted the songs to reflect what I had just kind of like, you know, out out loud talked about in in the act in the interlude. It's giving art. Uh, it's trying. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's giving. <laughs> thank you. It really is. By the way, listen to I may be an actress, but I can't fake how I feel. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So oh, much. you should do a you Thanks. should do a reading, like a dramatic reading. Oh, of all of them? That's pretty yeah, good. I'll do a cold, <laughs> good old cold read. I love it. You know what other lyrics stuck out to me? What, Dan? Um, it's in Love Feeling. It's the outro mm. where you question, don't think you listen to my music. Yeah. Yeah. You talking to somebody? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, um, there was a person in particular I was writing that song about. And so I don't think he does listen to my music. He, he knows the song is about him. And he was like, I do listen to your music. I'm like, I... We're friends on Spotify. Like I, I see <laughs> you recently. Yeah, you're still together. I was at a current thing. It's a current thing, Ooh. maybe. Oh damn. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I, yeah, when I wrote that um, and played it for him, he was like, "That was his, his." He loved it, but he was like, "I do listen to your music," and I'm like, "Sure, you do." I would hope he would. That you would want to support it. Of course, I don't and know he if he is. Him a boyfriend or a thing. Yeah, you, you. Of course, of course. I think, I don't know. I've been very lucky because I feel like every partner I've had has been supportive for sure. And I think I have my own insecurities about my music that I sometimes bring into a relationship. Like, um, you know, most of my partners have like some sort of background in music. Um, I'm definitely, obviously, have a type, and I feel like, <laughs> and I feel like. I'm always like hyper insecure about whether they connect to my music uh, or not. It's um, scary. It is. It is. And I'm not I'm not as insecure about my acting. I don't know. I'm just it's, kind of like if you like the rom com, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Well, because I don't know. it's like not yours. Like you people yeah. blame like writing before they blame an actor, right? Ten- yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I feel still we get the brunt of it, even if it might not 
totally be our thing. But yeah, I mean, we're not in charge of editing. That's why yeah. I got into producing because I was like, I want to be in charge of it all. Yeah, because you can really control the story because the story yeah. can be cut into a thousand. It, 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 it can start as one thing and come out totally different. But you know what? Even when you're producing, it's still a collaboration. That's uh, one of the hardest parts and one of the best parts is it, when you're making a movie or a TV show or whatever, it's a collaboration. You're making it with a group of people, and that's beautiful. You can say the same thing with music. There's a lot less, I feel like— Way more narrow. Way more narrow. A lot less cooks in the kitchen. And way vulnerable. Like yes. And I and I become I'm way more of a control freak in my music than I am acting and and producing. I'm definitely very much like I want to be collaborative. I want to, you know, listen. And I do want to do that with music too. But with music, I'm kind of like this is me, so I have to tell it the way I want to tell yeah, it's it. It's your name, your story, and yeah. there's nobody else there. Like you also can't rely on a single other person when you're no. up there performing it or having to go and talk about it or when people Google you or Spotify search you, whatever it is. Yeah, and if it's a, if it doesn't do well, if it doesn't. Uh, connect with people if it doesn't if it's not good uh, subjectively you're going to be to blame so okay. why not stand behind everything instead of like I think my original debut album I think why I'm thankful it didn't come out is because I don't know if I totally stood behind it the same way I stand behind this so I think if it come out and didn't do well or didn't do this or whatever it would have felt like painful because I really had kind of like trusted different people to be like, okay, I'm doing this because this person wants her, this person wants her or whatever. Um, this album, I'm like, I stand behind completely. So I'll take, you know, it's hard. You still don't want to hear you're not good enough or no, or this or that, but I'll proudly take it because huh. I stand behind it. It's yours at the end of the day. A hundred percent. What are you thinking? It's like 50-50 with people that are in your position, but like, was there ever a time that you wanted to completely separate yourself from Austin and Allie and like, you just didn't want to associate with it? I think that, of course, there's baggage that comes with it, right? Yeah. Of course, there's like a big old like stamp that's on your face that's like, you're this kind of brand. And, you know, you kind of know that going in. I was 14, 15 going in, but I also like had been in the business already 10 years. So I feel like I fully understood the implication of what I was doing, right? I knew that after the show, it's going to be hard. Your mm -hmm. people are going to look at you a certain way, but it's going to give you this platform. And a big reason why I did the show was I was playing a songwriter and I wanted to do music so much. And this was like my opportunity to kind of mix those two worlds together. So that was... You know, I was getting way less pay than I was getting on a network show or, or a, a, any of that stuff. But any of that stuff, like, didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I was also able to still go to the school at the same time because as a teenager, 14, 15, especially as a young girl, like, you're going to have a hard time working if you're not graduated early and, mm -hmm. you know, working adult hours. And I didn't have to do that on the show. And I was so thankful for that. And everyone was very, very supportive of that, which I, I really appreciated. Um but yeah, there's a baggage. There's, there is, for the rest of your life, you're going to be known um, partly because of this mm -hmm. thing. And I'm so proud of Austin Alley. I'm so grateful for the experience. I like, love, love the people who are a part of it, which sometimes not everyone can say, which makes me sad for them. I like, feel like we lucked out with the people that we had. And I'm so, so grateful for it. Um, do I feel like, oh, sometimes it feels a bit harder to grow because people really want to keep you in that box? Yeah. Of course. A big thing I decided this year, which was also scary. It was a, it was a year of scary choices <laughs> and just leaning in. I took all of the songs off my Spotify page, which was like really scary because of course it gives you like a certain number of monthly listeners. Yeah. And I was like, I had pushed a, a, I was almost at a million, um, earlier this year because I, you know, a different few different playlists and different things. Um, and then I felt very just like stuck because constantly my, you know, top 10 were these songs. And I was like, ah, oh, I, I, those don't represent me. These aren't the newer songs that really represent me. So, I was like, I'm going to take them off. I also, you know, talked. I've been trying for a long time, but was able to like talk to a few people about like putting my character name as the artist instead of my name. 
Um, and it was really scary because all of a sudden I saw all these, you know, listeners necessarily like drop and not be yeah. there anymore. But it also felt right because it didn't represent me mm -hmm. musically and it didn't feel right to have it represent me musically. And I feel like on an Amazon music, on any of these platforms, I want to make sure that I'm being represented, you know, accurately. Yeah. And it also like, yeah, you want to be represented and you want people to see you as you and like, yeah. I get it. a lot of respect, a lot of appreciation scary, for though. that. Yeah, terrifying. Scary, <laughs> scary. Yeah, but you got to get, you got to shed some old to bring in the new. You know, you do. Yeah, and I'll always like, I, I will never shy away, um, from the show and like talking about the show, because I do love it. And I'm, I'm, I'm still so grateful to be a part of it. But of course, there are times when I feel like frustrated and stuck because. I that is, was years ago and I am a different person and I have grown from that. And I do feel like I had to strategize my career because of that rather than if I didn't have that, um, I probably would be making different decisions. Genuinely a blessing and a curse. It is. It is. But most of the time more of a blessing than a curse. Mm. But then there are plenty of times when I, I'm... I feel more of the curse vibes. And I even love seeing pictures of you and Ross these days when you guys get to meet up and post. <laughs> I'm, love. Like, I'm like, that's great. Oh, he's the best. Yeah. I just, oh, he is the best, truly. Just one of, one of the loveliest people. I feel that with Caleb and Rainey too. I just, I want us all to hang out forever and ever and ever. Really good group of people. Mm -hmm. You're right. Really like good very group of unique people. and different where everybody just got along. Oh, it was just, yeah, so good. Healthy. Healthy. It is <laughs> funny, though. Sometimes when we get together all together, I do sometimes, like, feel like I revert back to who I was at, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, a, it's it's totally. truly a family vibe. Like, when you, I don't know if you ever feel this way hanging out with your family. When you are with your family, you sometimes just revert back to, like, the 11-year-old self that you were, where you're like, wait, I am a grown-ass <laughs> adult, man. I am so much more than that. Um, so sometimes we hung out all together back in March. And I, I will say I had like flashbacks. I was like, wait, I am a different person than I was when I was 15, but all of a sudden I feel my 15 year old tendencies <laughs> coming out, which is a little strange. Yeah. yeah but that's like a vulnerable that's... real relationship. That yeah. You, it's hard to duplicate, you know, and those don't yeah. always come in your life. No, no, a hundred percent not. Special. You good? Yeah. Dude, listen to the album. I may be an actress, but I can't fake how I feel. Come on. <laughs> Link in the description below. It's all on Amazon Music. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. Absolutely. I also appreciate you being honest and sharing your story through an album and giving it the right tender love and care and creating an actual body of work that is substantive and real. Like, it's an experience to listen to. Well, I appreciate all of those words. I <laughs> truly love you guys so much. I also am just, like, always love, love, love. Not even getting interviewed by you, but even watching your interviews always. Like, I feel like they're so honest. They're so beautiful. They're so thoughtful. And I'm like, I was really excited when I got the call to like do this. Well, I was like, yes. Come back. You know, you can come back anytime, literally all the time. You have an open door policy here and I, I appreciate you and love you very much. And you're really special. And yeah, you're fucking awesome. You're fucking awesome. We're sorry for messing up your lunch plans. Ah, uh, I know. I'm yeah. It's okay. We're we're gonna we're gonna do another day. So we'll figure it out. It's gonna be great. Yeah, the Zach Sang show waits for no one. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We actually wait for everybody. <laughs> uh, there's a link in the description below. You can listen to all Laura's music. It's waiting for you on Amazon Music. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amazon Music. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Laura, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>